So this is then how government is immoral. This organization that calls itself the government then only knows how to solve problems the one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus the plurality of nonviolent solutions that you and I and my friends here already share. So what are your thoughts on that? Oh, I have a question for you. So oh, if, not, yeah. if not the government, yeah. then who? All right, yeah, so let's examine what is government then, right? Because uh, if not the government, what is government? Government is a monopoly on the service and the goods that you and I want. Because I want roads, I want security, I want law. Order First class mail, right? Uh, the post office has a monopoly on delivering pieces of paper. However, it's illegal and criminal for anyone to compete, like UPS and FedEx. They can only deliver packages. ABC, monopoly in the distal spirits, retail sell and sell of, right? Retail sell of distal spirits. No one's allowed to compete. So then, Government is a monopoly, violent monopoly, in which you don't have the economic freedom, though, to cancel on subscribe as you would from a real business service, like Netflix. Trying to increase the price a couple years ago, people were like, yeah, overnight, cancel on subscribe, I'm going to Hulu. However, it's also a violent monopoly in which you don't have the economic freedom to compete entrepreneurially in order to say, I could provide you a better service that's not going to be abusive or harmful to you, the consumer. Well, keep in mind with the UPS, that's a publicly run program where it's like made cheaper so that everyone can get mail. Uh, no. So, all right, all right, so uh, USPS, there's, so that's what it purports it to be. A hundred years ago, there was a man named Lysander Spooner, <clears throat> and he saw in the Constitution that doesn't say that they have an exclusive right. They said that they can make one. So he said, all right, cool, I can compete then, and he did. They called it the American Letter Mail Company, and he did it faster and cheaper than uh, the government version. He was able to do it so much that the government, in order to compete, were forced to drop their weights from $2.50 down to $0.03, because he was able to do it faster than the competition, right? But eventually government sued him out of business, right? And then Congress passed the law the next year. It's like, okay, we're not dealing with that again. No one is allowed to compete with USPS. So it's not, somewhat not to say that, that they could provide this. In the past, there, there was an example of people actually doing that. I don't, I, I agree with your talking points and stuff about the, the postal service and stuff like that. But there's, what's your alternative for government and controlling people? I right, know yeah, 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 all right, all right, all right, perfect, all right. So, when we remove these violent monopolies then, these are just any kind of service and good that the market provides in any other way, right? We have market competition, costs for services or goods go down, quality goes up. You look like plasma screen TVs a couple of years ago, right? Business is one thing. How do you decide, okay, so society believes that this or action is immoral, so we're going to put you in jail? All right. who, who put someone in jail? Great question. So when you abolish the monopoly on law, you have a polycentric legal system, right? Like Virginia has a monopoly on a community, monopoly law that's forced onto the minority, right? Majority onto the minority. When that's abolished, you have thousands of free market societies based on consent catering to your lifestyle preferences. Now you can have a community with, you know, uh, that's 420 friendly, one across the street that's not, with real rules and, so you can get explicit consent to. that in. hates all black people and hates all gay people and kills them. Uh, Right, so and so what you're saying, so in a community in which people have like racial hatred or gender hatred, mm -hmm. uh, there is there will be a developer who will buy land, and these people will move there, right? Um, but they need a lot more resources, right, in the market to trade with to get the resources so to develop a community. Those people. Right, so social ostracism, right? Um, because then you look, then we'll look at the business. Like, who, who, who's trading with you? I mean, that right? works somewhat. But look at the South in uh, the 1960s. Everyone hated black people, and like, you couldn't go into the businesses, and everyone was like, I mean, that happened for years and generations. Right. And, until the government stepped in and was like, hey, you cannot discriminate against these people coming into your businesses. That's a good point. But you know what? Why that discrimination occurred? Because they were government laws. Have you ever heard of the Jim Crow laws? Yes. There weren't business, businesses rules. There were government rules, laws, forbidding you uh, to, uh, to intermingle and to trade with other people. Like uh, Rosa Parks, she sat on that bus in that section, not because the bus driver had a policy that you can only do the It was a city law that said you couldn't do it. But that government policy stems from people's hatred before government. So, like, the hatred was there, and then they say... We want the, our government to do this hateful thing. Uh, I don't know if it was hatred. I mean, you had like less than 2% of white people actually own slaves. Not all white people own slaves. So I would say mostly then it's politicians who want to make us divide us into fighting one another. Because, you know, if you, ha if you have a control of slaves, you don't want them to uprise. So the best thing you can do 
is getting to attack each other and so lowers their cost you're of that security. Only two percent of the people in the South in the 1960s were racist. Uh, racial hatred and having slaves. Yeah, about 1.5 well, was in all slaves of them. is different, but like. You well, you're trying to say where it comes from, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So you had Abraham Lincoln, and his idea was like to send him to back to Africa. He had a lot of very racist thoughts, and these are politicians, right? Who puts these laws into effect? Political rulers, politicians, right? Politicians make mistakes. But let's look back in the 1960s. Back then, decades ago, um, right? What I'm trying to say is when values are kind of pushed forward, they don't go backwards. Like back then ago, you had the KKK memberships over hundreds of thousands. Today, you have like, what, less than a thousand left. There's one guy in Colonial Heights that's, uh, you know, waving his, uh, flag and KKK outfit, only one person. It's like, yeah, and you're hearing today the CEOs getting fired for saying racist remarks. Like, social ostracism works and just getting rid of, like, nasty stuff like that. The market, like, you make a racist comment today and let's see how far you go successfully, I would, right? I mean, yes, right? like, social ostracism when the world nowadays that we have the internet and we're so socially connected. Yeah. But back in the day, like, these people had their own communities that were pretty much self-supporting in the South and they were totally racist. Right, I'm saying it's, the laws there forced it was it will be the criminal laws for you. Force them to be racist. The laws did not. When you have laws that say that you cannot have patrons who are black to sit in the front of your bus, right? If you do that, we will throw you into a cage. But the people didn't want. They saw the black people as a second class citizen. Actually, uh, that's not what was happening back then. Because back then, a lot of them were actually doing business with uh, with people who are black and other and other minorities. Because okay. at that point, it's like. Fair enough to we disagree on that point. Okay, let's, all right, all right. so let's go to, to a different point. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where do people get roads? All right, so where's our good one? So you'll find all these areas where we're talking about the government has monopolized. At one point in the past, they were at one point privatized. Uh, roads, they would charge it by the width of your axle. If they were very thin, you're creating rust, so they charge you more. If they were flat, you're evening out the groove, so they charge you less. Pretty much all these things at one point were provided voluntarily, right? Like any other goods and services. But when government wanted to get involved in the market, they can't have competition. So eminent domain starts taking over all this stuff, and now government owns all the roads. So, but even today, though, government doesn't build roads. <laughs> Businesses do. Yeah, right? subsidize, so, and I don't agree right, with that Yeah, either. right, right. I so you, it, you, if it's our money, I believe right, you, you that the government choose. should pay for it, and that should be our road, not this business as we give them money. So I think, I mean, I'm a democratic socialist liberal guy, so I mean, I want big... I want. I don't want big government. I want correct size government. Well, government is a government is a government, right? Uh, we and, need it, though. You no, know, we don't need it. I mean, we're, who, like, who takes the bad people and puts them in jail? All right, all right. So, in these rules, going back, in these rules that you give explicit consent to, right, to the rules and consequences, right? If I were to aggress, if you uh, in this community we don't smoke pot, for example, right? Uh, in one of the communities, like, well, you wouldn't move there to begin with, but say that you did. Well, in the, in the contract, explicit contract you have, it'll outline uh, the punishment. It's like, it'll be a fine, or it'll be a uh, pillow fight, or it could be whatever you give agreement to those consequences, right? The Amish, for example, the only consequences they have for breaking the rules is a social ostracism. Uh, whereas here... I agree with you that some government policies are unjust, it's and not they, un they should be fixed. It's just, it, it can't fix it. It was designed that way. Well... Look at Colorado uh, on the marijuana issue alone. I mean, we are fixing them in some ways, and we have it's not, uh, like progressive issues like um, over the past, like females' right to vote, um, social rights. I know we already talked about that a little bit. But let's um, go back to cannabis, right? One issue at a time. Okay. Seventy-five years to finally have the freedom of smoke a plant is not a measure of success. To gain one scrap that was yours by birth to be free, but to have lost so many others in the same amount of time within those decades, right? Um, Government right. isn't great in all aspects. They should never be involved, right? I mean, no, the Marriage no. Act. I'm well, totally why did the libertarian on anything you want to put in Why did the government get involved with the, with the Marriage Act? To prevent interracial marriages, right? Yeah. So a lot of... Another right, racial thing. From government. That wasn't a business. That was I'd, I'd government. Say it stems from the people in the government. Yeah, politicians, violent sociopaths who feel that they could tell you what you can and cannot do with your body, what you can and cannot do with your property. I'm Absolutely. sure you know the history why marijuana was... Um, criminalized in the first place because Mexicans were smoking and were like, hey, fuck these Mexican people, we're going to make this illegal so we can take them and put them in jail or kick them out of the country. Politicians putting that, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, a lot of stuff comes from like very uh, racial hatred uh, uh, institutions, absolutely, right? Why, I don't want them I to- I feel like find... I'm agreeing with you more and more. I we know, all right, right. Come, come a little closer, something. come a little closer. We should be yeah, arguing yeah. about something right now. <laughs> we're fine that we have a lot of agreements with this, right? So the solution I'm advocating for it's not to replace government for another government or to change or anything like that. Well, what I'm advocating for, we recognize, right, that this government 
only knows then how to solve problems through the threat of and use of violence, in which you and I are against. So why don't we let go of that solution, right? Like ostracize government, and let's work with what we already agreed to, find non a plurality and non-violent solutions to our community problems here in Richmond and build that up instead, right? With a foundational value that has real respect for cell phone ownership, real respect for private property, real respect for consent, right? How do we stop the one rich and powerful person in Richmond making all the rules and making their own little dictatorship? So like, rich and powerful people over here, if there's no government law, they are the new, the new government. The person with the most powerful, the person with the most powerful is automatically going to be like, okay, well you have to do exactly what I say because I pretty much own your lives, right? Uh, well, the thing is, there are thousands of free societies based on consent. It's kind of like a golf course community. Is that what he wants to do? If he wants to build a golf course community and, and, and rule people there with very intolerable rules, no one's going to move there and he's going to go bankrupt, right? Because this is a business thing, right? Um, so if it's in too intolerable as a business plan, no one will move there. You just lost all your money thinking that you can rule all these people's lives because no one no one has to. They'll just create pick a Kickstarter campaign or, or do their own kind of funding, create a real community that, they, that matches their lifestyle and preferences. What if X, um, you know, bad X guy says, hey, you can't leave or I'm going to kill you. You have to work for me now. Well, how do, What's well, stopping you, them from literally blowing everyone away? So, like, if I work at Target and want to leave Target, they will blow me away? Yes, exactly. Right, like, right, in an anarchist right, society, right, like, right. seriously. Anarchist, if you, if you understand anarchist. All right, so uh, we can have real security. But well, let's say that is the most... Uh, flawed way about of making profit of all of a sudden you're doing great as target because you have a store you have businesses all of a sudden you're gonna say all right guys no employees can leave uh, or we'll kill you. yeah yeah it's like look this is a horrible PR decision do not do this our competitors will use this against us and we will go bankrupt stock markets will go down uh, dramatically because anyone can compete like with Netflix start to increase the price mm -hmm. they thought they could get away with this like well we're gonna who cancel burp, unsubscribe they lose all that profit they might that might work in the 90% of the country you know where people are like smart and like me and you and are like peaceful like uh, peace loving would, people I would say a lot of people are what about like like the bad people in right, southern right, right, Alabama right. that are like still extremely racist and will like... Okay, okay, yeah, and these are people I would want to know, right? Under government laws, um, it's illegal for you to be that way, but I want to know who has those stuff so I do not patronize them, so I can ostracize them, right? So I can make sure that they, they live in their little backwards redneck part of the woods, right? And no one will trade with them. Uh, you know, sorry, civilization belongs to the civilized, not to the barbarians, right? So if we want to be civilized, hey, let's... T take some of these courses, understand where did this stuff come from, right? Otherwise, no one will trade with you. Good luck living in the woods, stopping down trees, and making a living out of nothing, right? Good. No one can make a pencil on their own. You need a cooperation of markets to get all these resources together to make something as simple as a pencil. Good luck trying to make anything else to live out of or make out of. And I'm guessing anarchist societies don't allow for social programs like Medicare and taking care of the elderly. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so before Lyndon Johnson's war on poverty was like exacerbated poverty and all these social problems and else, before that poverty rates were declining rapidly because there was a thing called mutual aid societies called friendly societies. If there's anything you could take away from this conversation, just Google that. And you'll find all the programs, the waves of immigrants when they came into the United States and impoverished people, uh, they created like a centralized banking system. It was like, I'll donate a certain percentage a month and in the event members of my community became uh, impoverished, they may be able to bounce back up. So they had unemployment insurance, they had health insurance, uh, they had all these different insurance that worked. But the last thing government liked, uh, didn't like though, is that people are becoming independent. They need them to become Isn't dependent that more tied to like cultures? So like Chinatown, and then you'd have like it was all the Irish people and the Italians. You can say a lot of them had mutual aid uh, fraternities, uh, fraternal order societies, just doing all of this stuff, and that's what got people out of poverty. And this idea spread all across the United States, all across into England. Um, but you'll never hear in history books here. It's kind of like 1984. They don't want you to hear what the market has provided, right? So very, you know, like no one here will ever learn about Lysander Spooner and the American Letter Mill Company that competed, Didn't right? Didn't learn about it. Yeah, no. right. I mean, if you go to government schools, they're only going to tell you government stuff, right? Because they need to believe that only government can provide this stuff, and they won't show you in history that private people have done this voluntarily, right? Consensually in their interactions with others. And it's the same thing with many of these so other stuff. what gives me, like, okay, say... Like, how how do you help the people that are like 75 years old, you know, that like, who's going to donate to them just out of the goodness of their heart? Well, the fact that you uh, ask what about the poor implies that you care about the poor. I'd imagine you'd help them, right? Democratic socialist, absolutely. Right, yeah, yeah. I, I would help as well. I'll help everybody. Right, yeah, yeah. Uh, when nearly, uh, this is what everybody asks, always comes to. But what how about do the we poor? make people? 
And that's another thing that you're well, totally against you, you as don't an anarchist. Make. You don't make people. Right, GoFundMe. You've seen all, all that stuff. People, there's a GoFundMe for so $30,000 to make a donut. That's, that's a Ron Paul argument that, oh, no, we don't have to have social programs because people will just donate out the kind of That's That's heart. how it worked in the past. I just don't see that as... Well, factually, with fa there's factual evidence for you to see how that worked and how it lifted everyone from really poverty. Poverty was almost just like gone because of that. So I, I, that I might would, be for multiple reasons. For, Some people but, might just be no, dying. No, because of this stuff. Because of this stuff, because they were they were being provided unemployment insurance, they were being provided health insurance. Uh, the government just came and said they didn't like this. I'm sorry, that's not up to our building code. Sorry, you got to change all this. Sorry, we're so licensed and started threatening doctors and destroyed all that because government can't have competition for the new programs coming in for uh, Social Security and Medicaid. Right? They can't have anyone competing against that. So that's why they destroyed all that. What stuff. about the 40-hour work week? What about like not making kids like work? For in these factories with horrible conditions. Like in England? So a lot of people were starving to death, dying. Uh, these people help these uh, children from not starving to death anymore. Uh, government conditions... But that's when the, the social programs come in. No, no, well, them. I mean, the social programs the government had led them to their death. Entrepreneurs creating ventures and businesses for them to find trade, to, to get food, lifted them out of dying. Right. So you're advocating that we put the six-year-olds back to work? No, no, not at all. Uh, what I'm advocating is not putting them in that situation to begin with in which they're starving and dying the government placed them in so they don't have to be desperate to do something like that. How right? is it the government's fault that kids look, look have at Venez bad look, look at Venezuela right now with government price controls, bread lines, real bread lines now. Bread lines for, for diapers, for basic needs, right? Government getting involved. And now people are, yeah, starving there. Now. When nearly half your income is no longer being stolen anymore, when you add up local, city, state, federal, imports, tariffs, sales tax, everything you buy has been taxed, uh, you know, uh, fiat currency tax, right? You're on a tight budget to begin with, depreciates every dollar that you try to save, right? That hurts the poor the worst. And when all of that is gone, oh my God, oh my God, you could do so much now. Nearly half your productivity and what to work, when you no longer have to work 101 days just to pay taxes out of the year. Domestically, I think your policy is... I don't have policies. Okay, domestically, your ideas about what would happen, I think, are a little, um, uh, what's the right word? Just like, you think they're going to happen, but I, I don't think they're going to happen. You know what, I, you know what uh... I'm saying? But let's go to uh, foreign policy. So let's say country X comes and kills the USA. How do we defend against them? Uh, well, then, <clears throat> so we could get to that. So but let's talk about anarchy for a second, because you brought it up, anarchist society. So... Anarchy, of course, means uh, and without archy rulers. In this context, political rulers, like monarchy, mono archy, one political ruler, right? Or oligarchy, several. So it means without political rulers, without strangers arbitrarily, violently forcing their opinions onto people in a geographic region, right? So just any thug, really, thief, murderer, right? People kind of do that. Um, so in this place, then, what anarchy advocates for are, is the essence of anarchy is consent, then, right? The political rulers are their relationships with you and everyone is cohesive. Anarchy is against that, so we advocate for the opposite, for consent. So, but because you can't show me government or your friends or family or anything without showing me individual people, only individual people exist. So therefore, wherever there's consent between individual people, there's anarchy. Right now, this is anarchy. Right now, anarchy. Wherever there's consent, anarchy. Wherever there is coherence, statism, right? Government. Fair um, enough. Yeah. So now, like, what I do we do? That, but I say, like, some coercion yeah. is necessary. Uh, for, for what? Uh, for military, for social programs. I mean, we can have security. We, yeah, we can have security. Security is a good one. Um, so the Supreme Court and many Supreme Court cases have ruled, uh, like in Winnebago versus Duchesne County, that there exists no obligation to protect your life, liberty, property. None. So you're forced through taxation to pay for a service that doesn't exist. So they have decreed that. Um, so which means that there is no security. This is your Mad Max world. This is your post-apocalyptic scenario. There is no security here. This is fallout. Um, so in a real anarchist society, then, we will have real laws if you get explicit consent of real contracts for obligation of security to protect your life, liberty, and property, right? If I came to your door and say, well, sometimes I'll provide you internet, sometimes I'll provide you, uh, you know, security, sign this, like, hey, get the hell out of here, <laughs> right? Or your neighbors, if someone's just trying to, you know, create these shenanigans, right? Um, but that's, that's what you have with government, because there exists no factual evidence of a contractual relationship with government. Doesn't exist. So what you're saying is that, okay, we don't have the right to life if Russia comes and kills us. Well, it just means then anarchy, once we spread it here and liberate our community, right? Uh, exchange doesn't start in a while in D.C. or places overseas. It starts within our own interpersonal relationships. 
and after that, within our friends and community here in Richmond, and grows outside of that. Spreading anarchy and abolishing tyranny doesn't end here; it spreads hey, I all would the way love to Russia. A one world government where everything is like a one world government. Yeah, kind of. It's kind of like communism. Oh, I'm uh, kind of like communist. Stop, you know, stop. Little, no, you're not. No, I want like my Nikes made by Nike, and I want all my Xboxes and Microsoft. I want the foreign companies. I enjoy capitalism. You know, I'm a consumer. But it's like healthcare, roads, military. Um, the market can provide stuff all that no one wants stuff. to pay for. No, no, insurance. Wait, wait, like, whoa, whoa, whoa! But people have paid in the past. I just told you about it, right? And security, you don't have security. I was in the military myself, right? So if the military exists for me to defend our freedom or grant us more freedom as a measure of success, it has failed in that mission, right? We are not freer today than we were five years ago, twenty years ago, fifty years ago. I'd say. Right. So it's failed. The military does not exist then to defend or grant us more freedom. And I could say it as a testament as a former uh, welfare veteran. I'd agree with that, but we kind of need it, don't we? Like, maybe not in today's society because we have nuclear weapons, and if really, if you fuck with us, you're going to get fucked. They lost a nuclear uh, m a missile off the coast of Tybee Island, off the coast of Georgia. Just sitting out there. They don't know what to do. At one point, the launch codes were 0000000. zero, 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 zero. Uh, yeah, they're, they're, because business government is not a real business, there's no incentive to allocate resources efficiently, right? This is why uh, USSR collapsed, uh, because there's no pricing to dictate whether you're overproducing or underproducing, and it just inevitably collapses. This is why Detroit has collapsed, these unfunded uh, liabilities. It takes police security over an hour to respond to 911 calls, all right? That's inevitable. That's going to reach Richmond. That's going to go all the places. It's unsustainable and it collapses. When it's time for you to retire, we're talking about social welfare. There'll be no social security left for you. Well, right? that's the right winger's fault by taking it and spending it on giant tax breaks. Well, the money has always been gone. I mean, they don't really they don't really save it. I well, mean, no, it's... we've been paying into it as workers our entire lives, and then we're like, oh wait, you don't have social security anymore because I took that money and gave it to billionaires and tax breaks. Yeah, they stole. Right, right. They used you as collateral when you were a baby. You never gave consent to it. Right? They use this collateral to kind of fund these stuff in the future. They look at this future uh, a tax crop, right? Because you're a tax slave and these are tax farms. Uh, and that's what they, I never, I'm a baby. I can't give consent to such a program, right? But it's, uh, God forbid, it's right. for the greater good. Oh, well, it's for the it, greater good, oh, so, people. So, so. It is. The, the greatest good for the majority is also the greatest evil for the minority. That's true. Right? But so you can I have say, one or the other. So it's either, so it's the greatest preference then, not good, preference violently forced onto the minority and if the and, and if the majority of people want something anyway so they want if they want like i don't need to force you to date right you want to date right? right if people want roads people will have roads you need to force them to do something they already want or desire oh what that what that means is that hey there's a market demand entrepreneurs come in and say hey i'll match the demand i've been in the road making business for 20 years look at my customer feedback reviews what five if the Koch brothers want to make as much money as they want by polluting our environment and eventually i mean the oh, world's perfect. already destroyed perfect. you know right like, now we have now the world without government right abolished the whole world is anarchy now there's real respect for private property Should real respect for, uh, yeah. okay. for self-ownership we're under government, there isn't. Under government, they could take your land to eminent domain. So there's no respect. There's no course to respect private property because necessarily they must rob you of it first before they say we're here to protect your private property. Now you have a role that has respect for private property. Uh, course enforce that. So if anyone wants to pollute, that's an aggression against their private property. You could take them to court. They'd be held liable and pay restitution. Right? Um, whereas well, today you could do that. Today you could get away with it because nobody owns uh, the rivers. Nobody really owns a lot of this stuff. Government doesn't let you... Uh, homestead a lot of this area, which is why they'll just pay a fine. They have no incentive, So right? wait, how would an anarchist society make them stop that? Identity? All right, so... Stop uh, polluting. The, the way you, you could stop polluting, you have respect for private property, right? Your pollution on my land is a form of aggression, right? Okay. And now you could, now they could be held liable for that, and they can go to, you can go to court, and the court will see them as someone who is aggressing, and they kind of pay that but out. But who sets up the courts? You don't have any like government rule at all. Right, right. So you have contracts with one another. So like, in the event that you and I will get a dispute, uh, we have a third party that we can go to that's not connected to one of us, right? Arbitration. Arbitration, you find that everywhere. Etsy has it. eBay has it. Largest, uh, one of the largest businesses in the world. And that's what we're talking about, arbitration, right? Resolving conflicts of dispute. That's what capitalism is. Respect for private property and voluntary exchange. The only reason you advocate for it is uh, because it's the most efficient way, the most ethical way to resolve conflicts of dispute. 
okay. right? Okay, let me give you a hypothetical. So, yeah. millionaire, billionaire guy over here is polluting your, and you're, you're poor, unfortunately, and he's, well, like, pretty much destroying your life, and you take him to court. Yeah. And third-party courts, like, over here, he's also a business because he's in an anarchist society. Yeah. He's got to make some money. How do you win? Well, the, the guy who's been in business, this uh, judge, right, when we step into that courtroom, he stands up when we enter because we're paying for a service, not the other way around where I, if I don't, you know, stand up before the judge, I get held contempt of court and spend a night in a cage, right? Uh, otherwise, I'll go to someone else, right? So the arbitration that we seek is third party, not related to any of us. The reason why that judge is in that position right. to give a good, honest opinion is because he's been doing this for years, right? If there, it's like if Consumer Reports has been found out that that they've been taking bribes, you know, to change what their opinion or view is on certain products, they will go down forever, right? You can't trust them anymore. So judges have to be trustworthy. They want to be in there, which means that they have years. They could say, I've been in the business for 20 years. Uh, all the clients have uh, enjoyed the outcomes. Uh, it's been efficient for everyone, and, and people agree to have been fair. You'll find nothing of a uh, discriminating nature against me. I'm always fair and impartial, right? Okay, fair enough. Otherwise, they won't be in business. So the judge um, says, all right, big billionaire guy, you yeah. have to stop. Yeah. How do we make him? All right, so uh, the, of course, uh, here's, here's you have to pay reparations. Uh, you have to stop. If, for example, if they don't, if, pay if they, right, if they don't want to do that, that's perfectly fine. Now you're someone who has been shown that cannot be uh, trusted to uphold their word or their contract, right? I'm saying that I will give my word to follow the contract. If I violate your property, I will pay it. But if I don't want to uphold the contract, that's fine. Like This goes back to like uh, people have um, racial hatred or gender hatred. You will be socially ostracized because nobody wants, well, great, I can't trust you to do business with you. Everyone's going to uphold their contract away from them. In the event this billionaire then has another dispute with someone, right? Someone robbed him or hurt him, and he wants to go to court. The judge will say, whoa, whoa, whoa. First, you need to resolve that dispute first that you had with the guy that you ruined his, his land before I can provide you any kind of arbitration, right? So you kind of screwed yourself. So keep okay, your word. Right, because it's like benef cost-benefit analysis, right? It's more see efficient. That makes sense. Say that I'm a murderer and I just like go off killing people indiscriminately. Who stops me? Uh, well, I guess from there, uh, how do you get in? Well, these communities have real security, top of the notch security. Right, I've been in the business for 20 years. Uh, very good at detaining people. Never had anyone get past our line of security across uh, the fence or border, right, uh, or, or the the building walls. Uh, so you got to get past them first, right? And first, how do you like stop these like security people from just being like, okay, we have all the guns, we have the power. All right, all right, so Give us stuff. Right, right. So that's a good like uh, liability. So guarantee, right? People will be having the same concern. So me as a security business, I can say, hey, look, um, you guys can check our check our stuff any time. If we have more than one extra bullet than we promised, uh, we'll award you a thousand dollars, a million dollars, right? We're here to protect you. We don't want you to feel uh, weirded out or anything. And a lot of businesses will have to do the same thing if they want to compete against that kind of guarantee, right? Um, what about evil people? Yeah, yes. I mean, so uh, what about evil people that have these giant companies that are like, okay. If they don't care how, how about did, you, well, right, but how did they, how did they get this in that position of giant? They had to create profit. They had to be really good. And, or and they already had it before the government collapsed. Um, right, like yeah, but like a lot of this, Donald Trump comes up and he's like, "I am now the ruler of New York." Uh, well, I guess ruler of New York. I mean, you can't really say you're the ruler of New York anymore, really. And, unless so. you have a whole bunch of people that you pay for, like, hey, henchman A, B, and C. Here's assault rifles, tanks. You are now my okay, army. Okay, okay. Well, all right. So let's a little close. All right. So I would say, um, now there are now, now instead of one monopoly security, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of security companies out there, and they all can have contracts with one another. In the event that someone one wants to go war war mode, we'll just ally together and just take him down. Right? It'll look great on us, especially. Hey, we're the ones who took down this war war uh, Trump. Right? Okay. Uh, and great profits that will come. There's like, oh my god, great. Yeah, sign me up. At the same time, uh, I think this is the most well-armed populace uh, in the entire world, right? And yes. you know, for people, so uh, good luck getting past. I guess a lot. Yeah, That's yeah, nice. right. And then, and um, so there's also volunteer militias. I'll definitely go out there and fight that, even if it's not in my community, right? So we all see it that he's aggressing, violating consent. But immediately he's cut off from the market from anyone trading because you need logistics to kind of fund this sort of stuff, right? So no more internet, no more uh, water or utilities, uh, no more food being traded. You're stuck with whatever you had when you try to make that uh, warlord mode. Uh, but at the same time, it's unsustainable because you really need taxation. Maybe <laughs> well, no, uh, unless warlord guy says, "Hey, water security people, I will kill you unless you continue to provide me these resources." Yeah, and they're like, "Yeah, okay, uh, sure. <laughs> hey, call in all the other security guys, right?" 
Okay. Uh, but, but, but at the same honest. time, they can't have stunning, standing I'm armies. Late for class, man. Oh, man. All right. Uh, all right. This, this is a really fun. great conversation, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, that was good, I man. You're, you're on top of all of this stuff. Yeah. Um, the last thing I want to say was without taxation, you can't have standing armies. That's why Hitler wanted to take over France so fast to take over the tax farms to sustain his war machine. Without governments, no taxation, no more standing armies. It's, it's extremely, incredibly costly to sustain that stuff. So as a business, it's so costly that you'll go under very quickly if you try to go that kind of mode or way. But uh, I'm Cal. Mark. Mark. Nice to meet you, man. Hey, too. Let me give you a... Okay. Uh, let's talk some more, man. Uh, we do like monthly gatherings, economics, history clubs, uh, anarchy, uh, capitalism. Um, I think you definitely enjoy the conversations we have. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if I could just play devil's advocate, that'd Absolutely. be great. We, we do that all the time. <laughs> Take care.